Howdy duty gamers and welcome back to Professor Layton and the Curious Village episode 4. Um, I know that in the past couple episodes I've been saying that I'm going to be having shorter episodes, but I'm definitely going to have a couple shorter episodes for the next couple days because I want to record two episodes tonight and it's already midnight and I have work at 9 tomorrow. So I'm going to do... Um, oh. If you missed the last couple of episodes, by the way, um, or if this is your first episode you're tuning into, Professor Layton is a puzzle game. It's very story driven, but it's basically like a puzzle game. And like in the first game, honestly, the puzzles don't really relate to the story very much at all. But towards the end, or like the next games, uh, the, the the puzzles are like really good messing with this, or like meshing with the story. But yeah, it's basically like a puzzle game, but it's also very story driven, and it's just a super fun game from the Nintendo DS. Like 16, 15 years ago, honestly. Um, but yeah, it was a very, very fun game for me. And so that's why I'm replaying it. But yeah, if you missed it in the last couple episodes, uh, Cat ran away. And so that's where we are. But um, yeah, as I was saying, the past couple of episodes, I've been saying that I'm going to do shorter episodes. And then last episode ended up being like 36 minutes. So I'm definitely going to stay towards like 20 minute episodes or so. Glass shower holds a single germ. After one minute, the germ splits into two germs. After one minute, those two germs split into again, forming a total of four germs. Continuing at this rate, a single germ can multiply the whole jar in a, a single germ can multiply to fill the whole jar in exactly one hour. Knowing this, how long in minutes would it take to fill the jar if you had started with two germs? Okay. So basically what this is saying. A glass jar holds a single germ uh, after one minute. So it's basically doubling. So I want to say this is basically two. This is basically two to the 59th power. Right, because it doubles every minute, and um, the first minute it goes from one to two, if that makes sense. So two to the 59th power I mean this has nothing to do with it actually. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, it should just be quick maths because it's not that hard. But I was just pointing out that, that is 2 to the 59th power. But if um, if you cut out that first minute, it's not going to make it 59 minutes. Like, it's not going to make it that easy. Um, because... So let's just say... It should only be 30 minutes, I want to say. <laughs> because... Continuing at this rate, a single germ can multiply to fill the whole jar in exactly one hour. A single germ can multiply to fit the jar in exactly one hour. But that being said... If you go by the first minutes, right? You could see how much faster this is going to ramp up. Right. So it shouldn't just be one minute. It should be... Is it actually just... It, it's... I'm just going to go with the obvious answer because it's 20 Picarat, so it's not a very hard... It's either 59 or 30. Well, here's my guess. Okay. I was overthinking it, sorry. 
bringing the 59th power and shit to stuff like that, that was just dumb. Yeah, I was being dumb. Now, if it started, like, deeper on... Oh, nice. We found a painting scrap. Is there no hint coins here? Oh, there's one right there. Alright, Claudia's right here, so... So yeah, as I was saying... I'm sorry, I get very sidetracked very easily. Um, as I was saying, these episodes should be like 20 to 25 minutes. Because I want to record two tonight. the stupid cat. I'm so glad it takes us back to the manor. That's actually so nice. Some puzzles will appear from their location in the town as the story disappear as the story progresses. But there's no need to worry. Most of the unsolved puzzles are going to be sent to Granny Red Ocean's shack in the village square. Visit often to track down puzzles you pass and work toward completing every puzzle in the game. I'm not going to be doing that. Um... Oh, I did miss one, though. Five card shuffle. So I've only missed one puzzle, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, introducing us to Professor Shell or uh, Sergeant Shelmy or whatever, Inspector Shelmy. He's going to be in the next couple games. He's a semi-important side character. There's been a murder. A man was killed here. That nerd ass motherfucker dead as hell. Ask around, see what everyone else is saying. What'd you find? At least Luke gets it. So that's a pretty big meme in like the Professor Layden community. It's like someone's dead and they're like, oh, Luke, this reminds me of a puzzle. And right there, he was like, are you serious? A puzzle at a time like this? But yeah, it's just a... If you're holding, you're holding an eight-pointed shape with a red dot on it. If you hold the shape so that the red dot is in the position shown in diagram A, then flip it over. If you hold the shape so that the red dot is in the position shown in diagram A, then flip it over, you'll see a black dot as depicted below. Now assume you're holding the shape as shown on the left side of diagram B. Where will the black dot be? when you flip the shape over. Okay, so if this is the dot right here, and when you flip it, it goes to that side. 
you flip it this way, which means the dot is right here. Which means it's two to the right. One, two, right? It's two to the right. So if we just go two to the right here, one, two, that means it's gonna be here. And if you flip this here, it will be on this side right here. There we go. Another puzzle solved. Let's talk to Fat Boy over here. What do you got for us, big dog? All this talk of families had me contemplating a puzzle I once heard. Oh, classic, classic. Bickering brothers. Six brothers have gathered around the table to eat dinner. Each of the brothers is prone to fighting with the siblings directly above and below him in age and can't be seated next to either of them. Also, brother three and five got into an argument the other day and refused to sit next to each other. The eldest brother, brother one, has already sat down at the big table and is waiting on other brothers to start eating. Can you find a seating arrangement that will keep everyone from fighting with each other? So... Three and five have to be away from each other. Wait, did I just? That should do it. Okay, I, I'm not gonna lie. I just kind of clicked it. I didn't. I didn't double check with my, with my like brain. Like if that worked, I just clicked it to see what would happen. Because I like at first glance, I was like, wait, I kind of cooked for a second. Okay, what did I get wrong here? Six brothers gather around each other. Directly above and below him in age can't be seated next to either of them. Also, brothers three and five got into an argument. So who's right next to Oh, four and five are right next to each other. Does that work? One's already sit down. And three and five. So let's just put six next to one because I think that should work. And let's put one and two can't sit next to each other though. Okay, let's actually think about this now. I just threw that first guess out as a Hail Mary. As I already said, the big table was waiting on the other to start eating. Can you find a seating range that will keep everyone from fighting with each other? Okay, so three and five cannot sit next to each other. So probably that one three five and then we can do nah no one can go there no so five can't sit there for sure because if five sits here then two four or six can't go here so what if we move five up one and we put two there and we put six there and we put four no we can't put four there because it's next to three I'm not even double checking again. I thought that was it. I think that's it. Another puzzle nice. Nice. So there's actually two answers to that. You can mirror image it. Alright, let's talk to Professor or fucking Inspector Chelmy. 
Let's have your nose present scene of the crime. Oh, here we go. I had to talk to Matthew again for some reason. Uh, one main thing in this story that I've always loved, or that I like is uh, Professor Lane always telling Luke how to be a true gentleman. He always says like, a true gentleman never takes his hat off or blah blah blah, whatever, shit like that. Love that shit. Alright, let's talk to Dahlia. I love the dialogue between Luke and Leighton. So good. You think Ramon somehow involved all this? Potentially, yes. However, as of yet, we don't have enough information to draw any solid conclusions. I see. If that's the case, then I have a request for you, Professor, to find Ramon and bring him back here to me. It's against me th that I am being considered a suspect in this brutal crime. I must prove my innocence at once. As you wish, Lady Dahlia, we will ask around to town to see what we can find. I appreciate your help, Professor. And then I'll be waiting for the good news at the parlor. Let's maybe do like one more puzzle or something like that. Maybe find like one more puzzle. Because 17 is a little short still. Let's try to find one more puzzle. Or if we find Ramon and explore the story a little bit or whatever. Look at this picture. What is it, Professor? That lady dolly she's holding a baby. Baby must be the daughter. Flora was her name. They say true beauty never ages. Maybe we can ask Lady Dahlia about it. Let's ask her about it then. <laughs> Not her baby. That's not the baby, that's my baby. Alright, let's go find Ramon. How can I help you? It's about the picture of the lady, the one holding the small child. That's not Lady Dollar, I'm pretty sure. That's his wife. What's up, Kitty Gato? Well, Alright, let's go find Ramon. 
Apparently that meant nothing. What the bitch saying? What the dog do? Wait, are you fretting away there? I was like, are you fretting away? What's the matter? Did you see Ramon? Haven't seen him today. He doesn't sneak off on the job. Would you mind helping me out with the puzzle? One line puzzle one. Have you ever heard of one line puzzles? The idea is to place your pen on paper and draw a shape without lifting your pen from the pad or retracting any part of the line. You can, however, cross lines. Now that you're familiar with the concept, look at the four pictures below. One of them cannot be drawn with one line. Which one is it? So you may think... This one's doable. You may think it's the circle, right? But it's actually not. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think it's gotta be the house. I think it's the house. I'm pretty sure it's the house. Maybe it's the kite. Is it the kite? It's definitely not the top or bottom ones. It's definitely not these two. <laughs> Cannot be drawn in one line. I feel like the kite can, and I just don't see the pattern. What if I just do this? No, I want to say the kite can. There's probably like some way to just do it. Ah, but the tail, the tail. Is it the tail? I think it's the tail. The tail is like the sole reason that it can't be done, I think, maybe? Luke, here's I mean, it's answer. the top. I could have just... I could have... Yeah, I should have just guessed that a while ago. Because it's literally... It literally can only be that or... The bottom left one. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I was 90% sure it was the bottom left one. Because if you don't, like... There we go. Fun fact about me. Critical thinking is the key to success. I wish I had a notebook. Um, yeah, see, I knew there was one way to do the kite. I just didn't. I didn't know the path for the kite. But the house, I was pretty sure it was the house. Because I actually used to do one-line puzzles all the time. Um, on my work. Um, like on my schoolwork, I'm I'm dead serious. I used to do one line puzzles all the time on my work. I just draw a random shape, and I'd sit there for like hours in class, and I'd just draw on my paper over and over again of just like without picking up my pencil and trying to do one line puzzles. Just, just because I don't know. And, um, the house was, like, the most classic. Like, the house is just the classic one for, um, I wish I could show you. Can I show you? I can't really show you. Isn't there one I, is there one I can draw on? You 
can draw on this one. So the house, the house was a classic that I drew on my paper. I used to sit there for hours thinking of how many ways I could draw the house without picking up my paper or my pen like that. Shit like that. Like I would do that all the time at school. And then I tried to do this one like a, like a ninja star almost like it's like the house, right? Which is this, which I figured out every single possible way to do it. But like also with these on the end too. And so those are some of the one one line puzzles that I was always these were all these were literally covered on my paper. Like everywhere. Just like me trying to fucking get that shit. But Huh? Come on, Blue. I honestly... There was someone at my door, and I thought it was like a human. But it was my dog. And I honestly thought she was on my bed this whole time. Because it's late, and she's usually asleep. Okay, do you see her just fucking throwing around my pillows like it's her fucking bed? Do you see that shit? Like, she's terrorizing that shit. Like, just so she could get comfortable? Yeah, okay, buddy. Look at her. She's fucking going crazy on the blanket. Dude, I hate this dog. But I sleep with her every night. She's so cute. Um, anyways, that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. I know I went a little lower than what I wanted to, but I had story time. And I had Blue fuck up the vibe. So, uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. I am gonna record one more today. Um, just because I know I might get a little backed up in the next couple days. Um, going to the Kings game and all that shit, and I have work the next three days, so I have tonight off. Don't really have anyone else online gaming, so I'm going to record a couple, just, uh, just because. And I uh, appreciate you guys very much for watching, and I will see you on Wednesday with the next participating episode, and I'll see you tomorrow for some more sunshine. Peace out, everybody.